Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. Washes can be a fantastic tool, but they can also be a bit of a crutch. In this video, we're going to look at the downsides of using washes and look at an alternative way to do shading. I have here five pairs of twins that have been base coated using midtones. I'm going to shade one twin with washes, and I'm going to shade the other by deliberately painting the shadow colors where I want them. These minis are all 3D prints from Twin Goddess Miniatures, and they're all cuties. So I think a lot of us learn to paint by base coating with a midtone, and then adding washes to shade the mini. Afterwards, if we felt like it, we could add a few details and highlights. I'm using Army Painter Soft Tone on the light colors, Strong Tone on dark colors, and colored tones like purple or green when I have an appropriate match. Washes are a quick and easy way to add contrast and definition to a mini. They can add extra color hues to the model or make it look more weathered. Slap some wash on a mini and it finds the deep spots all on its own. Liquid talent. We have some control over how it behaves, but ultimately, we're relying on the color juice to work its own magic. I have a plateau worth of experience using washes, and I'm trying to do a good job here. I'm putting on enough to collect in the low spots, then I'm wicking off the excess so that there aren't big pools that'll mess up the flat areas. Okay, we'll let those dry and move on to the fun part. Deliberate shading by hand. I'm using a darker color, and I'm gonna paint shadows where I think the shadows go. But how the heck do I know where shadows go? I'm not a real artist, and I don't feel qualified to make these choices. We need to break through our mental blocks. With washes, the only decision is what color to use. After that, the liquid pretty much does all the thinking for us. But when we're painting the shadows, every stroke of the brush is an artistic choice, and that can feel overwhelming. Well, I'm here to tell you that this is actually straightforward and easy. If I can do it, you can do it. First things first, let's pick our colors. For most of the colors on these models, I've been able to find a prepackaged triad. Here's a triad of bone colors from Reaper MSP. You can tell by the numbering that these three are part of a series. 58, 59, 60. The midtone is aged bone, the shadow color is bone shadow, and the highlight color is polished bone. For these models, I've done the base coating with the midtone, and Reaper has suggested Bone Shadow as my shadow color. We'll get to the highlight color later on. Two Thin Coats from Duncan Rhodes also organizes their paint line in triads. The pants on this kobold are Witching Hour Blue, and we'll use Abyss Blue to paint the shadows. Pro Acryl paints aren't explicitly organized into triads, but the paint names themselves are descriptive and useful. Jade. Dark Jade, and Bright Jade. Thank you, Monument Hobbies. Seriously, thank you. We don't need explicit triads. For this dancer, her clothes use Burnt Orange as a midtone and Burnt Sienna for the shadow color. Pick a shadow color that's a few shades darker than the midtone and give it a try. Now, let's figure out where to actually put the shadows. Shadows go where the sun doesn't shine. Under the chin, under the armpits, and between the legs. For our purposes today, light comes from above. The band is playing an outdoor venue in the early afternoon. The top side of things is going to be well lit, and the bottom side of things is going to be shadowed. Choosing where to put shadows can seem daunting, but if you break it down shape by shape, it really isn't too bad. The drummer and the dancer each have an arm out to the side. The bottom of those arms get a shadow. Between the legs is often in shadow. Several of these characters have bent knees, which give portions of the leg like the hamstring or the shin a bit of shadow too. Our singer is wearing plate armor. We just need to decide which of those plates are angled up and which of those plates are angled down. On the singer, I ended up using Army Painter airbrush paint for the mid-tone, a Duncan Rhodes paint for the shadow, and later on I'll use Pro Acryl Green on the highlights. For hair, don't worry about every strand. Instead, look at the tresses of hair, the clumps. Shade the underside of the tresses. On faces, a shadow goes in the eye sockets, under the chin, right under the nose, and in the crease on either side of the nose. Faces are a bit tricky, but this will get you moving in the right direction. In addition to adding shadows to the underside of things, the shadow color will also look good in folds and creases. The drummer has big muscles and low body fat. 
We're going to help define those muscles even more by outlining them with a shadow color. This is the sort of thing that a wash can do, but I think we can do it better by hand. A lot of the clothes have some folds, and those are more good spots to trace with a shadow color. I think the pants on this kobold are looking nice. Shading by hand takes more effort and more concentration than washing. In the early steps, I was agonizing over every stroke of the brush, and I was experiencing a lot of self-doubt. What I've learned though, is that there are more right ways to do this than there are wrong ways. Trust the process and follow through. We're adding contrast and definition to the minis, and the shadows are ending up in reasonable places. When our eyes look at a painted model, we're not judging whether each patch of shadow is in exactly the right spot or not. Instead, we're seeing the overall effect. We're seeing color and contrast and definition. The mini is brighter on top and darker underneath. Things are going in the right direction. Oh, one more thing. For places where you really want some definition, you can skip the shadow color and go straight to black. I chose to black line the armor panels on the singer. The lines in the armor plates would normally take a wash pretty well, but I think they look even sharper with a bold black line. Okay, it's time to compare the minis we washed to the ones we shaded by hand. Washes can be useful. They're fast, and they definitely do add some contrast to the minis. For some textures, I think washes work great. Fur, scales, wood grain, feathers, chain mail, all of that kind of stuff looks good with a wash. Washes can also do a nice job of mimicking dirt and grime and weathering. Wash looks pretty good on bones and rubble. Washes make things look dirtier whether that's your intention or not. A drawback of washes is that they also make everything a shade or two darker. A common order of operations in painting tutorials is to do a base coat with a midtone, apply a wash, and then come back and re-establish the midtone by repainting all of the high points. This works, but it takes a lot of effort. By the time you've carefully repainted the midtone, washes really don't offer much in the way of time savings. Washes are clumsy and random and mindless. Sometimes they go right where you want them, and sometimes they don't. Wet wash also looks quite different from dry wash, so sometimes it'll surprise you. After you've washed the midtone, no color on the model is going to match anything on your paint rack. If the wash dries and then you find some areas that you want to neaten up, well, you're going to need to mix some paints and try to do some difficult color matching. On the other hand, if you paint the shadows and you don't like some of your brush strokes, you can easily use your bottle of shadow color or midtone to fix it up. One of the things I like about painting shadows is that the models turn out clean and bright. Washes are great at finding the cracks, but washes don't know where the light is coming from. They just kind of make everything darker. When we draw the shadows ourselves, we have so much more control. It can be a little scary to be responsible for the shadow placements, but once you try it, you'll see that you really can shade without washes. I think this is a big step forward on our painting journey. If you can shade, you can highlight. Grab a color that's brighter than the midtone and start adding some highlights to the top side of things. I'm not going to bother to mix up some half steps here, I'm just going straight to the third bottle from the various triads. We could work our way up through multiple shades to get smoother transitions, but I think this stark placement of highlight colors makes the point nicely. Trust the process, trust yourself, and follow through. The bits that are going to be well lit get a dash of highlight color. If you want, you can highlight some edges too. Being the decision maker for where the shadows and highlights go can be daunting, but you can do it. I believe in you. I think this drummer is a good example. At high magnification, he's looking rough. Ugly splotches of dark red or bright red here or there on top of an undercoat of medium red. But if you zoom out, the effect works. He's got a lot of contrast and definition. He pops and he rocks. If we wanted, we could spend hours blending all of those color transitions. But nah, not this time. He looks great. I think this is a very accessible paint job, and if I can do it, you can do it. Twin Goddess Miniatures is the studio who sculpted the models in this video. The Cyberpunk Kobold and the Drummer are both models that I use to teach painting classes at SoonerCon, and I'm glad that I finally had a chance to paint them for myself and to show them off on the channel. 
And yeah, thanks to everyone who took those classes at SoonerCon. It was fun. Now at ReaperCon, somebody entered Gary the Undead Gnome Bard and his xylophone in the painting competition. There were hundreds of outstanding paint jobs there, but I only had eyes for Gary. He's so cute that I just had to have one for myself. As for the dancer and the singer, well, I just think they're neat. Well, that's about it for this time. Thanks so much for watching.